Bless you. Thank you. God bless all of you. Amen. Wow. God bless you. Thank you so much for the welcome. Thank you. You may be seated. I think I'll go and come back. <laughs> what a blessing it is to be here. It, it always feels so good to be in family and in the house of the Lord with those that you have covenant agreement as we've talked about this morning. And this morning, it, it, it is a joy to be here, and Dr. Mary and I, as, we, as you know, did something we've never done before. We took the whole month, and we took it, too. I mean, we, we really did. We enjoyed our time together away, and it was, a, it was a blessing, and we were busy starting with all of those things that we had put off until that time, and then we began to relax and enjoy it. Certainly, we could not have had the comfort and the... Uh, have felt the assurance of, had we not known the, that you being faithful as you are and the, those that have fulfilled or filled the capacity of the pulpit, I am so thankful. And I thank you for your messages and your inspiration that you brought to, to the people. And it is a joy to know that even though we uh, are not here, many, many things go on. What an active place this Life Center is. And then I'm telling you, it's something... All the time, they have been on the uh, mission trip while we were gone, the 4th of July. I mean, there was just constantly things being taken care of, and that's a good demonstration that we as a family cover our responsibilities, and I thank God and I thank you for being so faithful. Please give yourself a hand, will you, for me? Thank you so much, and for Dr. Mary. We are so proud of you, and thank you. God for you. And it's good to be here this morning. I do feel like the Lord has given me a message for today, and I want to share it with you, and that we will all have the same message. And we know that as we've already heard at communion time, the Lord's table, that we are in covenant. And as we look at covenant, first of all, we are in covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ, and then as believers, we are in covenant with each other. And through that covenant relationship, God is able to accomplish far more than the mind can even comprehend. This morning, again, but let me say one more time, thank you so much for your faithfulness and for those who were so faithful to, to serve in our absence, and we are thankful. This morning, I want to spend some time with you talking about the messages, send the light, send the light. And it is a message that's very common in the Bible. And as I began to look at the word light in the scriptures, I was amazed, as I usually am, at how many words or how many times an application the word of light is. And this morning in Matthew 5 and 16 is a very common scripture, but it tells us a great deal. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And I notice the word pronoun your is used in that capacity in that scripture that it says he let your light shine, but it is his glory that's received, and that shows that there is a connection between us and the Father that as our good works are seen, he gets the glory because you see it is his good works shining through us that makes the difference. And so when he says, let your light shine, he is in fact saying, let his light shine, and that that, and therefore, he will be glorified in it. Now, what was this light that Jesus was talking about as he was speaking to this crowd of those who had gathered to hear this man, Jesus, speak of all of the glorious things that were happening but he is speaking there of light, your let your light shine. They, he is speaking there of the character of the Lord. He is speaking of the character of God himself. The inward 
God, we are created in His image, and as we draw closer to His image, we become a greater reflection of that image. So when we look for the light to shine, we are looking at our character in line with His character, and it is the character of the Lord. You see, when God came, He came, or sent Jesus, He came to drive out darkness, to drive out sin, and to drive out ignorance. Because light always drives out darkness. Light is greater than darkness. Amen. And He is the Son of light. He is our Lord. So we see that the character of God is represented as truth. He is truth. And truth describes what it is that Jesus came to bring us. He came us to bring us truth. He said, I am what? I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so if we want to know what truth is, we look to Jesus as the source and the example of truth. What happens? Truth makes you what? Free. Truth makes you free. And that is why the truth came that we might be free. In John 1, it talks about there that Jesus was in the beginning was the Word, and He was the Word, and He was the fullness of everything that God is. He was the fullness of of all truth, representing God the Father. And everything was made was made by Him, and nothing was made that was not made by Him. And He came to us to deliver that. And then in that fourth verse, it says there, In Him was life, meaning man here on earth, and the life was the light of men. So we see that God the Father imparted to the Son the truth which became the light, And He brought the light to us, and the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness uh, comprehended it not. And so we know that Jesus came, as it says again in John 14 and 6, I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am the truth. So the light is the reflection of the truth and character of God that was shown clearly and fully through the Son, And then we, in covenant relationship, become as the Son. Isn't that a miracle? That God becomes the Son and we become sons of the Father. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters, but we are also brothers and sisters with Him. I just think that's worth saying amen this morning. I think the Lord means for us to get that real well. So the light was always promised. Even in the Old Testament, they looked toward that day of coming when the light would shine. We know that the light was given and the light was to be delivered. And in matter of fact, in Isaiah 60 and 1 there and 2 and 3, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. This was a prophetic promise that Isaiah was saying that your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. And we, the Gentiles, shall come to your light, and the kings of the brightness of your arising. How many of you are in the light this morning? How many of you know the light this morning, and the light has shined upon you? And turn darkness away, so that you can come into the truth and be set free. So we have the presence of the Father. When, God, when the Messiah came, He came as the light. The light that would shine us into the character and knowledge of who God, our Heavenly Father, is. And He said that when He said, I am the light. In John 8 and 12 is where He declared, I don't represent the light, I'm not like the light, I am the light. And the light draws us. We're drawn to the light that drives us away from darkness. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of light. Let me underline something here. He who follows me. You see, Jesus was speaking to all people, but he was saying, those that follow after me receive this light. Now the light is exposed to all people, but it's those who walk in the light or those who choose to follow 
Jesus and his teaching. That is, that is why he tells us if he came as the light to be a demonstration to the world and to us, but he who receives the light, he who allows the light to come into their life, their life will be transformed. I'm going a little further with that in just a moment, but I want you to hold on to that. You've got to look for the light. You've got to receive the light. If you want the light to shine out of you, you can't just say, shine on light. You've got to say, Lord, first of all, I surrender to the light, and then the light shall shine through me. I become a, res- a-, a reflection. I become a reflection of His image. You see, on the fourth day, it said He created out of darkness light, and light drove the darkness out. And then later on he told us, he said, don't be like a lamp that is set, a city, be like a city that's set on a hill that it shines above and everyone can see it, meaning not only the light to the world, but the light to the cities, to the community. And then he said, don't be like a lamp that's put under a bushel, he said, let your light shine. Take it out from under the bushel. So we're a lamp to our family We're a light to our nation and to our city because we shine brightly with His anointing and the fulfillment of His power. Come on and say amen with me this morning. So He tells us in Matthew 5, 14, 15, 16 there, He said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's speaking of the city. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lamp stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. It doesn't give light to everybody. It gives light to those who receive the light in the house. So therefore, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is a wonderful testimony, isn't it? It's His light reflecting through us that makes the transformation. It is His light. Let, let Let me be sure you hear that. It is His light that does the work. It's His light that does the shining. It's His light that makes the change. It's His light that brings about change. It's not my light. It's His light. And I am just doing what I do. I'm going where I go and letting His light shine. And as it shines, it brings transformation. Now you ought to be delivered this morning from responsibility. That's why I say you you surrender to Him and He shines His light through you. And you become a light walking around and you say, I didn't know I was a light. Yeah, you're a light. I didn't shine. I didn't know I was shining. Yeah, you're shining. I didn't know I was I didn't know I was beaming. Yes, you're beaming. (laughs) Sandra Johnson, who's getting married this month, was telling me before the service that who does our overheads. We thank you, Sandra. Bless you. She's she's going to get married this month. Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, she was saying that people had told her that she's in in where she works that you look so glorious. You got to shine about you. And And she said, yeah, I'm getting married. Well, let me tell you, you're married to the light itself. You are connected to the light. And so you shine just because of him and who he is. So that is how this light works. But let me, let, let, me, let me tell you that Jesus is the what? The truth. And the truth is the light. And even though it's your influence that may get you there, it's his light that makes the difference. Yes. You may use your connections, your influence, but when it comes to transformation, it is his light. So our job is to show up and let him light. <laughs> Our job is to show up and let him, let him shine through us and become all he wants to be. But what makes us shine? How do you get that shine? Well, it's being God conscious. It's being Christ conscious. It's being Jesus conscious. It's lifting up him in all circumstances. And if we want to be a change agent for the Lord, if we want to be one that he can use, then we have to spend time with the light. You gotta stay in the light if you wanna shine. 
You can't live in darkness and come out and expect to have the light. You got to walk in the light. You got to talk in the light. You got to want to be in the light. You got to want to be. I, I come in and we have church and I think, Lord, when I leave here, let me have church every day. Come on, let me feel this anointing every day. Let me, let me walk in the light and in the knowledge and in the truth. So let me let my light shine so that they will see my good works, but know that they come from the source, which is the source of truth there. Now, let me listen to what I want to tell you this morning. I've been thinking about this. Jesus loved people, but he connected and had relationship to those who came to the light. Jesus loved all people, and he desired to have a relationship with them, but it was only those who came seeking the light that he was able to have that relationship. And I'm saying a lot when I say that, if you get that. Because you see so much of it is Jesus loves everybody no matter what. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. That is the love that he extends and he invites us all to come to the light. But he cannot shine through you unless you have a relationship with him. And the source of life is in that relationship. And we must have Jesus in our heart. Just because God loves everybody doesn't mean they're all going to heaven. And you're going to hear a little train change in what's being preached. I'm going to tell you right now, the old judgment is coming back because it ain't working. And we're going to have to talk about the light has to shine from within and the within comes from the Christ when you have a relationship with Him. Those that came to Jesus seeking the light were the ones who could have a relationship and change their behavior. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, just like you, I hear behavior and, with Christians and not Christians about the same. Did you hear me? Yes. Now, I, I've thought about this, like I said, and I looked at the scripture and I began to go through in my mind of the people that Jesus saw a change in the behavior. And I look at Mary Magdalene who was one who worshipped him and broke the alabaster jar, who, who wanted everything to be directed towards him. We don't know. She's been a, said that maybe she was a prostitute. But what I do know, she had seven devils in her. And I know that Jesus came after her uh, uh, and, or she came after Jesus seeking the light and she found the light he cast a demon and all of a sudden she began to see, wait a minute, he's a source of forgiveness. If I come to him seeking him, he is the source, those seven devils. I look at the rich young ruler who came to Jesus, and Jesus says, if you want to have a relationship with me, you got to receive the light. you got to get rid of all those entanglements. you got to get rid of all those distractions and let the light come and shine through you. And Jesus said, why do you call me good? He looked at him, he said, good master, why do you call me good? And he says, there's nothing good in me. What is it that you're looking at? And what Jesus was implying was, you see the goodness in me, which is God. That is the light that's shining through you. So if you're willing to change your life and you come to me, I'll shine my light through you. But if you're not willing to change, I can't have a relationship with you. Can you hear me this morning? We, we see the light shines in those that are drawn to the light. He is able to have a covenant relationship. But if you deny the light, he cannot have a relationship with you. Oh, we'd like so much to believe everybody's going to go to heaven, everybody's going to get saved, whether you confess Jesus or not, because God loves everybody. He loves everybody, but if you want a relationship to him, you've got to run to the light. Now, I'm going to tell you this morning, unfortunately, maybe for us, we are the light. And when we draw people to us, it's to point them to Him because He is the source of truth. And I looked a little further. I looked at Zacchaeus. 
He changed his whole life and Zacchaeus was up in the tree looking for Jesus. In other words, I'm looking for the light. I want to see the light. I want to change. And it changed his conduct. He became a giver and all of a sudden he realized the truth was I cannot outgive God that if I give, he will give back and he multiplied what he did. So he saw him as a financier. Mary you saw him as a forgiveness. And then the Pharisees came to him and Jesus said, I don't have anything to do with you. You're a bunch of religious folks. In other words, he's much like us today in the world. He made up, they made up their own religion. See, everybody wants their own, everybody wants their own religion. Everybody wants it the way I think it is. Well, I, I just believe in fairness. I just believe, in, I just believe God loves everybody. And, and, you know, you be you. And as long as it doesn't hurt me, you be who you are. And I'll be who I am. And, and you know, I, I don't, my, my light is my light. Your light's your light. As long as we both shine our own light, we can have our own way. Come on, church. We're in trouble. Telling you. And so I look at others. I look at the woman with the issue of blood. She pressed through. She was looking for the light. She wanted to get to the light. She said, if I can just get to him and touch his garment. And she touched him and she was transformed. It was her faith that carried her to that place. And now we begin to see that she understood what it meant to have faith. And not only have it, but act on it. In other words, the light was shining and she responded to it. She was determined to know him as healer. And then I kept looking through. The centurion came to, to, to Jesus and he said, I've got a, a sick uh, one that's sick. And Jesus said well, he could see his faith and he said, I'll go and heal. He said, wait a minute, you don't need to go. Just say the word. Now that he said, I haven't seen such faith. What was he talking about? He saw the light, the light shining. He said, wait a minute, I want the truth. I want to walk in the light. And you are not confined to place or distance. No matter what my circumstances are, you can shine the light in on them. You don't have to be at the place. You can just shine the light. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit shines the light. And I kept looking at Pool and Bethesda, and Jesus came to them there, and he said, wait a minute, do you want to be healed? In other words, do you receive the light? If you don't, you can stay where you are. You can stay handicapped. You can stay dysfunctional. You can stay limited. But if you want the light, you receive the light. Stand up and walk in that light. Have that light shine on you and walk in the light. But you've got to choose it. Just knowing about it doesn't do enough. You can know about God, but you've got to find His plan, and His plan is Jesus. Jesus is the centerpiece of all of, the, of everything in this Word. It was the, Jesus was in the place when it began, even before, as Dr. Mary testified this morning, even before the foundation of the earth, He was there in place, ready to send the light when the right time came. And He is ever-present right now. To provide us with the truth. So you can go all the way through the Bible. How about Nicodemus? He understood that religion wasn't the answer. He thought he had the answer. Here he was in the hierarchy of the movement of the Jewish faith. And yet he came to Jesus by night sneaking in. As I've said, Nick at night. He came in looking, <laughs> looking for a way to find the light. He came in darkness. But he came in darkness looking for light. He said, I need you to shine a little light on my understanding. And Jesus told him about being born again. And then you can receive the light. Now church, we're going to have to talk about Jesus to people. We're going to have to get back in the habit of talking about Jesus again. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to talk about. We love you and God loves you and no matter what. But you've got to say God loves you and he's got a plan for your life. But you've got to go to him and let the light shine in it and know his plan for you. Amen. We can't leave people in darkness. We're allowing people to walk in darkness and we're not shining the, his light through us. How about the, so we see Nicodemus understood that the light freed him from religion. The woman called in adultery. Look at there. He, and it, it's interesting because he, Jesus said, basically, this is a trumped-up charge, and you've been used as a, as a vehicle, as a vessel, to try to trick me. But when it was all over, what did he say? He said, you are forgiven what? Now go and sin no more. 
In other words, oh, bless your little old heart. You just go on and do what you've been doing. You just got caught this time. <laughs> Next time you may not get caught. But this time you got, no, he said, no, no, no. Be different now. You've had the light shine in your light. The light of mercy has been put over you. The light of grace has been extended to you. Now walk in that light that you've received that light. Look at every character in there. They all are that way in John 8 and 12. Look at that scripture with me. Then Jesus spoke to them, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He who follows me. You see, it's one thing to teach people about God and salvation. That's important. It's critical. But then we have to teach them the message of Jesus. Study the words of Christ. When I look at the words of Christ, I, I, I see that one thing that, uh, that I know, as I said, light draws, but he told us, sin and go no more. You know, just like, we say, what about the lost lamb? The 90, 91, he left one to go find him. He did because the lamb was lost but wanted to be found. He was a lost lamb, but he wanted to be found. He looked for the lost coin. He went and looked for the lost coin because the coin didn't know it was lost. And it needed to be found. But he waited on the prodigal son until he got the light and then he came back and said, now you're ready for a relationship. Now you're ready to receive the blessing. He said, I've been waiting for you to come to the light, but until you decide to come to the light, your life is still your life you're spending. You see, folk, we've got to not just accept the fact that Jesus died for sin. That is a given. It is critical but that you got to receive that. you got to believe that. You've got to accept that. You have to surrender to that. We're in a time when it's going to be, it's going to be kind of getting tough. We're going to be talking about some warfare going on here, folks. And you better be strong. You better know how to claim the name of Jesus. You better know how to plead the blood of Jesus. You better know what it means to say the name of Jesus. You got to know what it means to let that light shine. You got to make declaration. You got to honor him and his sacrifice. You can't do it in your own strength. I've tried. Most of you tried too. Just, you know, if I just get a good enough grip and grip up hard enough and get things really strong enough, I can change things. Then you go back to that place, shine on, Father. Let, shine on, shine on me. Open, open me up. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You see, Jesus didn't have a mixed message. That's my point this morning. He did not have a mixed message. His message was, I love you, but you got to change. You got to be born again. You got to change your life. His message was, it says in James 1 and 17. Let's look at that right there. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of what? Lights. With whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. In other words, I've got to accept the light. Now look at what the message you're about to hear. And the reason I know this is Prophet Hammond who incidentally was just chosen as one of the 40 men who changed history. Christian men brought up there. You just, what, a, what an honor it is to serve with him. Amen. But when he came out with his new book, how can these things be? And he said, I, I never knew you. you. But Lord, we cast out demons. We laid hands on the sick we, and they recovered. We did all these things in your name. And he says, I never knew you because why? It was my light shining, but you never accepted my life for yourself. The message changing, the message changing. And it talks about if it was Jesus who had the words in Matthew 7, and 13, 14, enter not by the narrow gate, for it is wide and the gate that leads to destruction. But, and, but many go through it. But he said, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who make it. Excuse me? What was that, Lord? You love everybody. Yes, he loves everybody. And he wants desperately to have a relationship with each and every one of us. But he says that 
not only is it knowing about me, it's knowing my words and being consecrated to them. You know, he was kind of pretty direct, wasn't he? It, it's those who are willing to drink my blood and eat my flesh that are willing to follow after me. And they said, your family's standing outside, your mother and your brother. And he said, I don't have a family. Only those who've been committed to the Lord who've been born again. He was speaking to all of those people that at the, um, on the mount. Message on the mount, the scripture on the mount, the sermon on the mount. He was speaking, but he said, you are the light of the world. Who's he, who was he talking to? Those who had come to hear the light. Those who had come to the light. He was saying, you're the light of the world. You've got to carry the message. Faith draws to the light. Never knew you, God. Wait a minute. I cast out demons. I prayed for the sick and they recovered. That's pretty, that's pretty stout. But he said, I never knew you because your heart wasn't right. You see, it goes back to Acts 8 where they were doing it for the glory. And Peter came and said to, to Simon the sorcerer, he said, in you is the spirit of iniquity. He said, until you get rid of that iniquity, you're cast out. a message and it's a message that needs to be let me tell you when I got saved I got saved because I was scared I was going to hell I felt the heat of hell that, 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 that evangelist let me feel it hey, hey, I don't want to go there I'm out of here I want to get with God I want to be saved <laughs> then I realized what it was to have that relationship with him so it's a message it's going to, you're going to hear Religion blocked the light. We know that. He looked at the Pharisees and said, you're a bunch of hypocrites, you're a bunch of whitewashed vessels, you're nothing but an empty tomb. There's nothing to you but just a vacuum. You don't have any light in you. There's power in the light. I want to look at some scriptures just so you remember. People are willing and waiting. People are waiting to see if your light shines. There's one thing to be rebel, relevant but there's another thing to be relevant and let your light shine. And he said, I want you to let your light shine. I, uh, you know, being relevant doesn't shine your light. It's being relevant gets you to the place to let your light shine. So with Philippians 2 and 15, let's look at some scripture. That you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Boy, I tell you what, I could pray, God, let's let me be harmless. Don't let me lead other people into destruction. Don't let me be a, a loose cannon out here that's just about to bring destruction upon your word. Let me be true, a demonstration. How about the scripture, Ephesians 5 and 8? If you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, walk as children like, come on, let's get excited about that one. You know what it is to be in darkness, and you know what it is to be in light. I'd rather be in light. How about you? I'd rather shine than to be in darkness and be hidden in the, the world. Mm. Then let's look at 1 Timothy, last one, 6.16. There's many scriptures about light. Who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light? Immortality dwelling in unapproachable light. Whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. In dwelling in unapproachable light. That's the light that dwells in you. Now one day the full light will be here. We know that in Revelation, 20, with Revelation 21, 23, and 24. The city had no need of the sun or moon or shine in it. For well, the glory of the Lord illuminated as a lamp is its feet. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth shall bring their glory and honor to it. Until that time, we are the representation, the light, to the darkness of the world that drives out ignorance, sin, and darkness. And so that has been what God has called us to do. Light drives out darkness. Romans 13 and 12 says there that for the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. And in the next verses he talks about the things that we had. He talks about reveling and drinking and immoral living, quarreling, contentious jealousies, no provision for lust, 
those are the things we don't like to preach about. We'd rather preach about how generous and wonderful our God is, and again, He is, but there is two sides to that story. There's love and there's righteousness. And Jesus demonstrated both could be together. He didn't give up His righteousness for for sacrifice for people. He held on to His righteousness, and out of Him the light shined, and those that came to the light, He had a relationship with those people. Well, let it shine. That's what I want to say. There was this, uh, just recently in the last month, a lady, her name is Teresa Elliott, went to be with the Lord. And Teresa was born back in in 1929, I think it was. But when she was, she studied to be a translator. And she wanted to translate into the language of the Bible to those people who had never known the Bible. She went to Ecuador and worked, she and her husband, she, he, they met in seminary, and he was also studying to be a translator. And so they, after six years of their both working independently, they fell in love and married. And there they chose to go to Ecuador to one of the tribes there. When they started translating, they went to the tribe, and it was only after about a year and a half they came to the tribe that they knew they were supposed to be And there on the banks of the river, her husband and five others was killed with spears by the tribe. They thought that they were cannibals coming to to the tribe to destroy them. Well, it would have been an easy decision to go back to the United States and and say, I tried, I gave my best, and that was the, I, I, I did what I was supposed to do, but I lost my husband. I've got a a little 10-month-old baby called Valerie, and, and here we are. But no, she said, I'm going to stay among the people and lived in a hut that leaked and, and lived among all of the wildlife that was there, but slowly but surely began to lead those to the Lord. And five of the six men that killed her husband confessed Jesus and changed their life. You see, she allowed her light to shine. One of the husband, the wife of one of the men that was killed was her partner, and she stayed on, and today over a, a third of the people are practicing Christian in that tribe today because that light was shining. Didn't let the light go out. Said, the light still got to shine. I've got to let my light shine. She came back to the United States, and there she has made such an impression. Many of you read her book but she's written 29 books. She's led, she's led many people to the Lord, had television, TV, everything uh, that she wanted to do. She kept letting her life shine, and she died at 86 years old recently. But her light continues to shine because, you see, what she did for the Lord, she, by the way, incidentally, she married again. Her second husband died of cancer, and she married the third time. Finally, she had some young man, younger than her, that was 10 years her junior, and he just determined to, to marry her, and she tried not to in, you know, encourage him, but he was determined, so that was in 1977, they got married. So, you see, <laughs> but some of her books talks about the hardship of things, and she quoted, and quote her, she said, God's ways are mysterious and our faith develops strong muscles so we ne- as we negotiate the twists and turns of our life. God's ways are mysterious and our faith develops strong muscles so as we negotiate the tw- twists and turns of our life. She is one inspiration, but she wanted to let her light shine. I want to end this morning by something that I've read recently that Mother Teresa said, and she is such an example of light shining, but I want to add one little phrase after every one of hers, and that send the light as an encouragement to us. She said, and let me just put it up because I want you to see it, people are selfish and unreasonable, forgive them anyway, send the light. Amen. Keep coming. When you're kind, people will accuse you of ulterior motives 
be kind anyway, send the light. She went on to say, if you are honest, people may cheat you. Be honest anyway, send the light. If you find happiness, people will be jealous, be happy anyway. (laughs) Send the light. The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway, send the light. Give the world your best. It may not be enough, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway, send the light. And in the end, this is the last one, it is between you and God. It will never, it was never between you and them anyway. Send the light. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Hallelujah. So today we are here to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you enter into that relationship, he begins to turn on the light. And the light gets brighter as we spend time with him. You know, We've all picked, we all can easily pick up bad habits. I was trying to rehearse some of my bad habits, not to redo them, but just to remember them. And it wasn't so much bad habits as dropping good habits. Things I could do and used to do that I need to restore. And I, and, and I need to be reminded of those. The Holy Spirit will remind you. If, if he doesn't, I will. <laughs> but anyway... I just want this morning to pray for us. I want you to stand to your feet. And we want to be light givers, right? Amen? Amen. So as I said, the beginning to turn on the light means, first of all, you have to know you've got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here this morning, we've already given the invitation, but we gave it because those who come to the Lord's table should come as those that have had an experience of that blood and flesh. But if you're here this morning and you are in a place where you'd say, I'd like to receive Christ into my heart personally. Like I say, everybody knows about God. They have an opinion about God. But knowing about God doesn't let the light shine in. To let the light shine in, you've got to accept His plan and purpose for your life. So if you're here this morning and you're not sure about that 100%, let's just make it a sure thing. Because if you confess him, he's faithful and just to forgive you and to save you. So if you're here this morning and you need Jesus in your heart this morning, would you just lift your hand where you are? Please, just lift your hand. We don't want anybody to leave. I see that hand. Thank you, brother. Come on, there are more. You're just not sure that you got eternity in your heart. You may have even confessed Jesus at one time, but you never have felt the security of that. And you need to feel that. If that's you, raise your hand. All right. Well, we're going to pray together, and this brother back here on the back row is going to receive Jesus. Are you ready to receive Jesus? Let's pray together. Father, Father, I I come to you now because you're the source of truth. I want the truth in my life. I want the truth in my life. Jesus said he is the truth. Jesus said he is the truth. So I want Jesus in my heart. So I want Jesus in my heart. And I say, Jesus, and I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Change my life. Change my life. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Set me free. Set me free. I receive you. I receive you. This day. This day. As my Savior. As my deliverer, deliverer. and my source of truth. truth. Let my light now shine shine. and bring glory to you you. because it's your light light that gives me light. light. And I thank you for coming into my heart and and saving me. me. Amen. 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 Let's give our brother an encouraging (laughs) time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, as I said, the first sign is really if you want transformation in your life is to surrender to the truth, and the truth is Jesus. So I've asked you to surrender in terms of salvation. Now, let's just, as I pray, I want you to pray a short prayer with me if this is your prayer. And and what I'm going to pray is that I surrender to the truth 
and let my light shine because I want my light to reflect Jesus. That's what I'm going to pray. If you can get in agreement with that, then you pray with me. Father, Father I, thank you I thank you for sending the light, for sending, the light, for sending, yourself, for sending yourself in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. I, accept I accept that truth. I surrender to that truth. I just surrender to you, Jesus. Now let your light shine. And any good works I do, let them bring glory to you. Father, take away those distractions, those places of darkness that would in any way diminish the light. Father, I want you to shine through me. Teach me. Instruct me, instruct me, guide me, Holy Spirit, guide me, Holy Spirit. show me the truth, show me the truth that, I that I can walk in it, and I thank you for it, you for in it. Jesus' name I pray, name I pray. Amen. amen, give the Lord a amen. hand this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah, you may be seated, Pastor Buddy and I went part of that time to Alaska, and I have seen, yeah, yeah. We saw the beauty of God's creation in glaciers and uh, in mountains and snow-covered mountains. I saw whales, the tails of whales, uh, eagles, salmon, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, it was beautiful, and I'm so glad to see it. But when I look out at you, you are really this morning the prettiest thing I've seen. We've missed you. We tried real hard not to talk about you very much, so we didn't. About the second week, we, we, uh, we found each other. So we thought, yay, and, the, and all the things that, we'll, that we should do to, to uh, restore, let God restore us, and, and it, it was wonderful. Uh, Pastor Buddy, uh, Apostle Buddy, Buddy Honey, uh, <laughs> thanked everybody. I, I didn't hear him thank the, the ones who spoke, and if you did, I'm going to thank you again. For uh, Elder Pat. Did you speak? And Dr. Edie. And Elder Blake. And Daryl Baker. And also for doing the communion, Pastor Samuel and Elder James Fields. See how good my memory got? You better watch out. We're back. I, we love you. Okay, we'll try. I believe Pastor.